Welcome to our lecture online and now let's take another look at the inverse function of sine, the inverse sine function I should say. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because there's a lot of confusion sometimes with the notation. And here I'll tell you why. So sometimes we can write y equals the sine square of x which means exactly the same as the quantity sine of x quantity squared. Now what you can say is if you write it like this for example y equals the quantity sine of x to the minus 1 is not the same as writing it like this. So in other words, y equals the inverse sine of x is not the same as y equals the quantity sine of x to the minus 1. Because this cannot be written as 1 over the sine of x, which is equal to the cosecant of x, which is not the same as y equals the inverse sine of x. What the inverse sine of x does is interchange the function and the angle. Now here you can see it clearly. We have y equals the sine of x, and when we take the inverse of the function, x is equal to the inverse sine of y. So there's the angle, and there's the function. If I give you the value of the function, I will then look for what the angle is that will give you that value of the function. Taking the inverse of the function like this simply says 1 over that function, which is the cosecant of x, and they're not the same thing, so keep that in mind. And the reason why it's confusing often is because here, this is appropriate. We can do this. This is correct. We can do it here. This simply says 1 over the sine of x. This means that we've interchanged the, si the, the function and the angle. Now notice here, I used y and x there. There I used x and y. It doesn't matter if you see it sine to the minus 1 of this, this is always going to be the function, and that's going to be angle. I'm looking for the angle so that if I take the sine of that, I'll get this as a result. That's what we mean by the inverse. And sometimes, instead of calling the inverse sine, sometimes we call it the arc sine. The arc sine is just another way of saying inverse sine. It simply means that we inverted the angle and the function. So I'm given the value of the function, I'm looking for the angle, that's sine to the minus 1. If I just simply say 1 over the function, that's the quantity sine of x to the minus 1, that's the inverse of that 1 over sine of x, which is the cosecant. Hopefully, that clears it up for you. So if it was confusing before, I'm hoping that this will make sense for you. And you see the difference. Make sure that you keep this in mind, that these are not the same. Notice, not equal to. Those are not the same thing. They're totally different things in trigonometry.